Thank you very much for staying with us here on The Key Points. Now, the CPP, in an effort to close ranks and end a plethora of petitions and legal actions challenging the legitimacy of its party leadership, has decided on a rerun of its national chairmanship election, which will see Madame Frimpoma Sapon Kumankuma face off against Hajia Hamdatu. We are told this will be sometime uh, this year, July or so. We'll find out details about that. But just as a decision was made on that Thursday, we are learning of concerns, again, with accusations and counter-accusations about who called the said meeting to decide new decisions. And another group said to be uh, members of the Council of Elders are disputing that decision. Uh, for the party of Kwame Nkrumah to have such leadership wranglings when they come from the stock of a man and team that provided leadership of Ghana, the questions keep coming. Shh, when can Nkrumah's CPP rise again? Our guest today is Nanaya Jantwa. She's the General Secretary of the CPP. You can share your thoughts if you have any on 055-369-8789. You can also send your tweets to our Facebook pages, tv3 underscore Ghana, 3FM 92.7. You can also tweet at me at Behobampo. You're welcome, uh, Nanaya. Thank you for making some time for us this morning oh, thank on you, Key Chief. Points. It's been a while. Yes, it's been a yes, while. But I wish you could add my middle name, a champion. Because there are three of us, Nanaya. Oh, okay. And they are all old, and they say I'm troublesome. Okay. So people are <laughs> giving them trouble. So I want to uh, to be to be distinct. distinct. Okay. Yes. So Nanaya Achimpim Dangwa. Coincidentally, yes. my son's very good friend mm. in school is called Achimpim as well. Okay. So okay. that would be easy to okay. remember. Okay. Great. Okay. So thanks for coming in. The CPP for the last two years, we've seen, you know, some petitions. I saw a recent court action then there was a uh, media release that you and some officers had been interdicted then later on just last thursday i learned that there's been a whole new meeting you've agreed on a consent judgment you've agreed that all the issues relating to the leadership contest will be put aside you run a new um contest for the national chairman why why have you taken so long first to sort this issue out then explain to us how this issue even came to be thank you very much um jifa and thank you to your good morning to your viewers and good morning to my cpp um, members comrades my executive uh, members i also thank your production team and you yourself for giving me the opportunity to come and talk about issues concerning our great party as you rightly said, CPP was, has been the doyen of political um, activity in this country. The, our first president, Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, was the one who brought independence and also the one who showed some exemplary and indelible mark of leadership. So certainly it will be um, a bit exacerbating and a bit problematic that we are where we are. But things must, must be corrected. Um, in 2020, we had a, a National Delegate Congress to select leaders of the party. In our constitution, it says um, categorically that the flag bearer position and the leadership position would be done at separate times. So because of COVID and the exigencies of the times, we had to do one Congress. We had to also do a discongregated Congress in the sense that Congress is always congregated in one place. You have all the organs of the party together and we do our voting. So this time we did a discongregated Congress and we did a referendum to affirm our constitution or take permission from the constitution to do a one Congress, both the flag bearer position and the national leadership positions. Because of COVID, the system was that you do your vote and you are gone. You don't congregate. So you don't stay? You don't stay at all because of okay. COVID. We didn't so want people... So that was in 2020? 2020. At the height of the COVID? At the hi very height of the COVID. Very, very height of the COVID. That was in August, at the height of the COVID. So, and we had to also go through the elections because time was running out. And the national elections, the general elections for the country... Was in December. Was in December. So after the elections, collation of the results were done in regions. And it was put together through electronic media. 
it was after a while that we noticed that the position of chairman and leader, whoever got that position, did not get the required 50% or more of the value. 50% or, or more. more of which the is typical or, also under yes, Ghana's yes, constitution. Yes, yes. To, to be 50, president, you must win by 50% yes, or plus more one. of the mm -hmm. uh, valid vote cast. So we then decided that, okay, because of COVID, what do we do? Because COVID was still there. And we had to go and do another discongregated Congress. We were, we were also facing an election. Did you get me? So the leaders, the IOC that did the election, decided, okay, let's finish the election. Yes, the, there were complaints from people. Hajja Hamda, to who was the first runner up complaint, there was a petition from uh, one person in from the northern region. There were complaints. My own uh, brother Kwame Janto, who is now the chairman of political affairs, who is an, has been in the party for almost 25 years, also complained. Other people comrade Asamoah, who is also the former chairman of Central Region, there were complaints. So they decided that some of us, we all saw it and we spoke about it. Yes, we were hated for it, we were called names for it and all that. So we all decided that the people, the IOC chairman, a senior comrade, um, Aru from Poman, who decided that let's wait and um, after the elections we look at it. Okay, so let me just clarify. Mm -hmm. At what point did you identify there was an anomaly in the electoral results? We, we, I identified it after the swearing in. Okay, uh, what month is this maybe? Oh, I, I think a month after um, we, we, were, we finished August 22nd. So maybe by September, yes, by October, September, you, yes. you identified the yes, anomaly. Yes, All right, but the swearing in had been done the already. The swearing in had been done already. But isn't that odd? Wouldn't you have seen the full results before deciding what because to do? Because as a congregated um, um, congress, the results are tabulated for everybody yes. to see. Percentages are done immediately then you know that this is what has happened. Because the constitution is so emphatic about it. It says that for anybody to be the chairman and leader of the party, you should have gotten 50% or more of the valid vote cast. Otherwise, it shall be deemed as if you have not been voted for. Then it goes further to say that if this happens, the first two people should go for a rerun. Jifa, for nothing at all, there's somebody in there who is the first runner up. So the first runner-up comes to say that I do not want a rerun. Like it happened in Legon with Honorable Alan Chematin and His Excellency Nanado Dangwa Kufadu. Immediately, the thing came up and His Excellency Nanado Dangwa Kufadu didn't get the uh, required percentage. Alan said that I need not go through the process again. Let him go. But if the first runner-up wants a rerun, you cannot deny the person that one. Besides, our constitution must be upheld. Our constitution is what dictates what we do in the party. Our constitution is what tells us what organs has to do what. Our constitution is the rules of engagement in the Convention's People's Party. So you cannot put the constitution aside. Also, the fact that this constitution in 92E is so emphatic. It doesn't, it, it, it is so emphatic. It uses a shall. I'm not a lawyer. I wish a lawyer could tell me. A shall for me, I think, is mandatory. Yes. That once, it's, it's not a may. If it's a may, you can weave around it. It is a shall. It's a shall. Be deemed. So I, I think the challenge now is that I've seen uh, and heard the then elected chairperson, Madam Kuman Kuman, say that then why was she sworn in? You see, my dear, the chairman of the IOC, if you're in a political party, COVID, you think through it, how do we do this? What is going on? You needed to have a certain leadership in yes, place yes. to deal with the 2020 yes. election. I mean, we needed to have Was a she informed that this was in an interim capacity until the formal... She would, re my, my dear, look at what is happening today. She would not even agree to anything. When we, look, when there was a, there was a, um, a petition and we were discussing it and I pointed it to her that, look, for this, the most important clause here is the fact that he said that you shall not be a chairman if you don't get 50 or more percent. 
immediately I was branded as the person behind the petition. Some of the things that will come to you, you might even stay back. But petitions after petitions have come. We are in court. I'm telling you, my dear. Sweetheart, the bottom line of all court cases, the bottom line of Nanaya Janto Osei Kofia Kwa being interdicted, is this 50 plus one. Okay, so explain to us why you were interdicted because I know that another case was filed by Onzi yes. Nkrumah yes. challenging the legitimacy of her position. Yes. But then later on we heard news that you and some officers had been interdicted. How did that come? Which came My before dear, the other? To be very honest with you, I don't know. I didn't understand the letter that came to me. I haven't done anything. There are things that you would do that will make you be interdicted in a political party. You misappropriate funds. You put the name of the party in disrepute. Do you get me? You do something that the constitution says you should not do. So I was a bit taken aback when I heard all the things that um, I've done this, I've taken the party to court. I haven't taken the party to court. So you didn't file a suit we against eight, her? No, eight people. There was a consent judgment um, that came out of a settlement. That is after all the issues went to court. The first issue, issue that went that to is court. That is the Amman versus the CPP. Yeah. So there was a concern that all of this was dragging and then you all sat to come no, to a decision. No, that is where the problem is. Okay. We all did not sit to come to a decision. Mm -hmm. If we do a settlement, do you get me? You have to go through the due process. The due process is that it is the central committee. Look, even the Council of Elders are supposed to do settlements. But even in my mind, I'm not a lawyer. And I've consulted judges, Supreme Court judges. I have done a categorization. I consulted a Supreme Court judge. I consulted an appeal court judge. I consulted a high court judge. I consulted lawyers, constitutional lawyers. I consulted the, the dean of Ghana Law School to find out, can we ever settle a constitutional matter the answer i got was no at the time then i went back to another supreme court judge who is like my father i'm in church with him and i went to him and he said look you cannot settle a constitutional matter at that time we were not getting the the this thing the petitions and all these things so i was like oh but we've done it he said you know what if you settle a constitutional matter there are people who will forever dissatisfied, especially if it is an electoral process. So you get petitions after petitions, and you'll be so inundated, you might not be able to work. True to his words, it has happened. He said you get caught, like on his own, you get caught cases after court cases, and you will not be able to work unless you do a rerun. So I picked this constitution to him, a Supreme Court judge, and I said, Your Lordship, if this thing comes before you, how do you interpret it? He said it is categorical. It is specific. It is not contingent. Madam Kuman Kuman says that she was forced to, that she was encouraged to sign this consent judgment. He, look, that is even, that we are eight, we are eight of this thing, leaders. Why are we now standing on one side? When they brought this settlement, do you get me carefully? We all looked at it and saw that this one will not... I mean, it has to go through the process. And we all, including her, that we shouldn't agree. She herself wrote a letter to the Council of Elders. That the consent... I don't have the letter. The, the settlement as a stance, taking away the powers of everybody. We all agree. By the time we realized... It has been signed into a consent judgment. Let me read something to you. Because the, I think part of that consent judgment talks about setting aside that clause in the constitution. It is not, you, no, you, see, not, you cannot set aside the clause. I get you, yes. but I think the understanding was that you draw a line under everything and you continue. But now you say that you have to rerun the election. You see, the point is that no, they haven't even read the consent judgment. The consent judgment on the issue of... 50% or more of the uh, valid workers. It says that you cannot go to court on the matter. You have to use internal mechanisms. Yes. The central committee is an internal mechanism. It doesn't say that, you see, the, the, it doesn't say the central committee. So even if we are using that consent judgment, that clause on 50 plus, it didn't say that you cannot go to court 
He said, unless you finish using the internal mechanism, if the internal me- I mean, for me, I interpret it in simple language. If the internal mechanisms fail, then you can go to court. The second one talks about the plaintiff and the defendant cannot go to court on the matter. Or the plaintiff and defendant said that they are not talking about the matter again. But the point is that even the person who signed on behalf of CPP, there is no name. Jifa, the CPP has structures. The CPP is a party. When you do a settlement on behalf of the party, it is not on behalf of aid leadership. It is not on behalf of the 52 or 58 Central Committee. It is on behalf of a party that has structures at the constituency level, at the polling station level, at the regional level, at all levels. Because in there are issues that affect us. For instance, the consent judgment says that there should be an election for national presidential and all of the organs before what december 2022 it is binding but the constitution of the cpp tells us that as a national leadership you have four years we were sworn in in 2020 august it means that as we stand now we are not even two years yet and you tell me that in december i should go for an election what is the prerequisite for that condition in the consent judgment? We didn't discuss it. The Central Committee, which is the highest administrative body of the party, did not go into the settlement to see that this thing that we are settling, how is it going to affect us? When some of the chairpersons of the regions, the regional chairpersons who are voted for us, like us, got to know the details of whatever was there, they were mortified. I can quote one person saying that then I am going to court because ever since I became a regional chairman, I am not even two years. Why do you curtail my position or my term of office? For what? So these are some of the things that, because if it had come to us, you see, the, uh, the constitution says that the council of elders act on, upon a request of the central committee, the national executive committee, of the party upon a request so what should have so procedurally within the party structures even that uh, settlement was wrongly done because before they agreed to that settlement they should have decided to go to NEC and the central committee to say that this is what we are doing for the central committee and NEC to say okay let's look at this paper what do you have in there is it going to help us or it's not going to help us what are the issues at hand that we have to do this settlement it is very key can we do i remember i asked the question can we do a settlement on a constitutional breach the question wasn't answered but the issue is that if you talk about acquiescence, meaning that we have made time elapse, the constitution of the, the Convention's People's Party does not specify. It doesn't give a statute of limitation. It does not tell us what time we can have this election. But in COVID, with the exigencies of the time, we believe that this is the time for us to do it because even the president has given assent to congregated political activity. And so it is time for us to correct this. Jifa, there is one other thing. If we let this lie, and in the next election, somebody comes up and gets 42%, 43%, and we say we are doing a rerun, haven't we done a, dis- a-, a-, a disservice to that-, that person? It means we have not been fair. This is an election. Um, Frempo Masapon Kuma and Kuma had 43% instead of 50% or more. In my mind, in my little calculation that I'm not good with mathematics, it means that if she has a solid 43% base, do you get me? She needs only 7% and a little bit more to be the chairman so that all these things will what will end. So tomorrow, if she goes to an election and she gets her 7% to her solid 43 waiting for her, do you get me? Who will ever come and say that you are not chairman? I am even surprised. Me, I will feel very uncomfortable sitting on the seat that every time there are wranglings around it. Okay. Now, the, now there are two things I need you to clarify. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, we received a statement by the Convention People's Party Council of Elders on current going-ons within the party. And then, of course, they indicate that they are constrained to issue the statement 
they have had the chance to intervene in the case of which you refer to Anan versus the Convention People's Party, Party in the process to broker an out of court settlement, which ultimately was adopted by the High Court as a consent judgment. Our understanding in pursuing this settlement was to fulfill our mandate of being the body that had arbitral and moderating roles within our party under Article 68 of the Constitution. We understand that we're properly advised that once the settlement had been adopted as consent judgment by the High Court, all the agreed terms of settlement has become the decision of the court. It's within this context that we deplore the various attempts by these people to insult the dignity of the court in respect of the consent judgment. So far, various written and spoken words by members we are advised constitute an affront to the dignity of the court and this and they write in quotes so-called central committee meeting of 21st april that was last thursday and the statement issued thereof is unlawful apart from being contemptuous of the high court we the members of the council of elders wish to inform the rank and file of the party that we do not recognize the said meeting since saying is unlawful and amounts to contempt we know that the earlier central committee meetings of 7 march 2022 and 1st april 2022 respectively in so far as it was to affirm the terms of the settlement and implement the consent judgment was lawful and therefore any person who fights against it is fighting is acting contrary to the consent judgment of the high court eight if indeed the real intention of the said persons who held the unlawful meeting was honorable why are they not pursuing the court suit which they have lately filed titled Onzi Nkuma versus Nana Frimpoma Sapon Kuma Nkuma, in which application has been filed um, by R.O. Frimpon Manso, Nanaya Jantwa, Aisha Sule Futa, Moses Ambeng, Osei Kofi Akwa and Francis Baladong to join in the side of the plaintiff. Then they go on to say that uh, we've observed as elders that the party is being torn apart um, because of the actions of a few. But your Thursday meeting was called by, I understand, is it your third vice chairman? You uh, see, our Thursday meeting, the cons we, we, we use the constitution. Yes. So who called the meeting Anybody on could can call the CC meeting. Oh, really? Yes. We found Any that executive? Every, you, if you're a CPP member. Any you, CPP yeah, member. You think that there's the need for us to have a CC, you can call for it. Okay. But when we drill it down for convention... Any member of the executive mem the committee or even of the central committee can decide that we have to have a meeting. Okay. So who called the Thursday meeting? The Thursday meeting was called by us. Who is us? The executives. The executives. Yes, and we have had so many calls. My dear, you know what? Okay, but you are the CEO of the party as yes, general. Yes, as so, a general. So, and and, and that Frimpoma doesn't want to understand that I am. Okay. So that's one bit. Yes. Then you have this statement coming from the Council of Elders, and I tried to get a list. Mm -hmm. of who the Council of Elders mm -hmm. are. Um, I'll get that. But then... Oh, we have it in the Constitution. But then why, why this statement? We why don't this know. Statement? My dear, please. These are the functions of the Council of Elders. Were they not informed of the CC meeting they on Thursday? Not, they are not supposed to be informed. Oh, really? In the Constitution. Oh, but if they are Council of Elders, at least they should know that there is a CC meeting No, my happening. dear, the Council of Elders only come in when they have to advise or they have to mediate. We've had CC meetings without going to tell Council of Elders that we are having Central Committee. It is when there is an impasse that the Council of Elders comes in. The Council of Elders are put in place by this constitution. Are they saying that we shouldn't uphold our constitution? Okay. So it's, it, that's a fair point, but I'm just what, wondering what, that in light of the seriousness or the gravity of the issues that yes. you're trying to tackle, yes. knowing fully well there was this meeting on Thursday to try and correct uh, a constitutional error, you see, when it we, would have when, just been when we courteous to inform it has not them. Been, you see, when we went to the meeting, that we, the, it, it, we came to an agreement that we don't have to be in court. This matter, we should that not. That is be, the Onzi case. Every, all every court case that we have. So you all decided to withdraw that or pull out. Uh, so we use the internal mechanism of a re-election to end everything. End everything. Okay. And you the get internal me. mechanism is you have um, a new um, president, um, chairmanship, 
a leader election. Yes, okay. we have so that it settles because you yes. see the bottom line, all these fight, we've never had this. The bottom line of consent, okay, Jifa. The bottom line of consent, judgment, and everything that is putting problem is 50 plus. Now, Jifa, let me ask you a simple question. I'm not a lawyer. If the issue at court is about 50 plus one or 50 percent or more, if you are going to settle, is it not just proper that we talk about just those two issues? You have to use your internal mechanisms to deal with the issue of 50 percent or more. Uh, if there is no ambiguity, it is there. Okay. So now issues about our term of office, who would not fight it if the term of office is being curtailed without reason? Even Frimpoma herself fought it, and we were with her. That the, the settlement that was put there wasn't something that was good for us. It's turned into a consent judgment. Fine, it is good. It's from the high court. We cannot say no. That is why we are using the same court processes to say that. Let's overturn it. Because even the central committee, that is the highest administrative body of the party, have not seen even the settlement. My dear, there's one thing that everybody should know. We are the leaders of the party. We are voted for at the constituency level, for the regional level, to run the affairs of this party. They shouldn't treat us as if we are some little, little people who are sitting in a corner. We have been voted for Jifa. To go for an election is not easy. And for a woman to go for an election is not easy. I went through some very dangerous and dangerous places. Walked, drove through nights of armed robbers and all that. Attacks, my cargo spots, drive. I mean, we went through something to be where we are. And I do not think anybody should undermine our position. Okay. Sweetheart, the point is that why can eight officers, eight, we are not just some people. We, we, we are reasonable. We are human beings. We are educated. For, for these other executive positions, yes. once you get a majority, you are through. Yes, we are through. You are through. So yes. it's only at the chairmanship and level. And the flag bearership level. Yep. That you and have I, that clause. And I ask that, why are you binding this like that? I ask the lawyers, why this? And they said that, look, for you to be the chairman and leader of the party, it should be seen that you are popular enough that when there is a crisis in the party, you can command troops to make sure that the crisis is calm. And I said, why the flag bearer 50 plus one? He said, look, if you are the flag bearer, you should be able to be popular in your party so that going out there, it is, it is required that once you are popular in your party, you can also be attracted to some people out there. Okay. Now, the... I understand that at this meeting, uh, Madam uh, Kuman Kuman was not invited. Because we want to set the record straight. You are was, Madam ha was Hajia Hamdak she invited? She is the chairman of the Youth Affairs Committee. So going she was there? Yes, going forward. But, is it, but then... Uh, but no, no, please. Going for, she's the chairman of the Youth Affairs Committee. Mm -hmm. We didn't go in with the intention of going to talk about this matter. But when the court cases were, was raised by the Constitution and Legal Affairs Chair, it's, everybody said, why all these court cases? Why? And I brought up all petitions. They said, no, 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 no. We should bring sanity. And if we bring sanity, we should go according to the country, uphold our constitution, and let the, uh, we go for an election. Hajia Hamdatu is the chairman of Youth Affairs Committee. We also needed to hear from her that, are you prepared to run? If she had said no, then there's nothing we could do. And she said, yes, she's prepared to run. She was there at Youth Affairs. So going forward, she might not be there anymore because both of them will not be there because they are going to run for an election. Jifa, this is our constitution. We need to uphold it. Every party in this uh, country, whenever they are speaking, they speak about their constitution. That is what the, the, the rules of engagement, that is the way to go. In NDC, I remember, and that day I was like, wow, when the founding leader or the founding lady of the, uh, the NDC, Mrs. Rawlings, the daughter made a request at a meeting that they should let their mother come back. They didn't say automatic. I read in the newspapers that they are going to follow their constitution. This was a founding lady who was part of those days. The PNDC, if you remember, came into NDC. She was in the forefront of the formation of the NDC. And now she wants to come back after they had their wranglings and she left. They said that we should use our constitution. She should start from the scratch. Every party uses their constitution. Why are we not using ours? Of course, the chairman of the IOC said that we erred. The IOC erred. And he wrote a letter uh, um, senior comrade, I, I wrote from Paul Manso, and she, he said that we should go for a rerun 
my dear, all these wranglings, Nanaya has been interdicted. Uh, consent judgment, you are doing this. You've been cited for contempt. You are going to prison. People have been taken to police station for talking about this. Frempoma has taken people to police station. That you, a mother, that you are sitting there, we think you, you've taken people to police station. So if this rerun is done, and she wins. Who is going to do anything? If this rerun is done and Hajia, we don't have any interest. Our only interest is that this party must run. Look, at, you see uh, Charles was saying that he wants the CPP to be the second. Because we have the capacity and potential to be second. So, my dear, once you are second, you can be first. So tomorrow, if we come to power and we cannot uphold our own internal constitution, how can we uphold the constitution of the Republic of Ghana? We need to show example that we will be able to uphold and hold this nation. We need to show example that even within our own rank and file, within our own self, there is no favoritism. The party, the Convention People's Party, is above everybody else. The Convention People's Party, it is not for one person. It is not somebody's corporate body. It is a political party that like-minded people have come together to come and make sure that it works. People have sacrificed. People have paid. Look, somebody like J.B. Daniels, our third vice, he has been in there for 50 years. He was with my dad. He was with all of them in the trenches. He is still there. Are we not thinking of coming to power? And we can come to power by doing our things right from within and ensuring that we do the right thing. All right, let's take a break and we'll come back. But when we come back, I'd like to ask you about a few things that have been happening on the national front okay. because we've not heard much from the okay. CPP on those issues just this week, there was a whole buhaha of uh, neutrality allowance. Okay. For a party that set up a uh, civil service, it will be interesting to hear your thoughts on that. Also, e-levy is going to be implemented from the 1st of May. <laughs> we'd like to hear your thoughts on that. And then, of course, the Economist Intelligence Unit report. E -E -E it doesn't mention the CPP at that all. That is what I said. I said, why can you do this? <laughs> you are not complete if you don't mention the, the CPP. CPP. So your so, work is not complete. So we'll come back <laughs> after this break. Thanks for staying with us here on The Key Points. Feel free to send me your messages on Twitter. Feel free to send me your messages on Facebook. And, the, of course, on our WhatsApp line. We take this break and we'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us here on The Key Points. My guest is Nanaya Achimpim Jantua. She says there are three of them, so we have to say the middle name. <laughs> we should call you Nanaya the third then. Uh, you see you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's an issue of the meeting called last Thursday being deemed illegal. And I think this letter from the Council of Elders, I didn't even indicate who signed it. It was signed by Islam Subiri Isa, who is the secretary to the Council of Elders. Do you how do you how do you do you know what what is the measure of legality? Do you know him? Yes, he does the secretary to the council, a very honorable okay, man. Okay, but if if he has signed this letter and they are raising these issues. I am saying that what they were they don't even you see, this is what I always talk about. You don't run to conclusions. Before you put this thing down, you as arbitrators. In the party you need to find out what actually happened you need to find out how did this meeting go how was this meeting called the request for a central committee has been on the table for a very long time the point is that central committee has components it is made up of certain um, certain kinds of people categorization the first category are the leaders us who have been voted for the second category are the policy arm of the party these are committee chairmen. They strategize. They do policy. Like you have an organizational committee chair. You go for a consent judgment which talks about elections. The organizational committee chair is not part of it. They are the strategy and policy arm. Then we have the regional chairman who have also been voted for to take charge of the regions. Then we have representatives of the regions who live in Accra. At that meeting that we called, we had the eight of us as national leadership. Eight, we were sitting there. We had the committee chairman, the lawyer of the, of the party was there. My brother Kwame Janto is the political position. He's a comrade. When it comes to party, he's not my brother. He's His senior, comrade. The senior comrade, Fe Jantua, was there. Other members were there. The regional chairman, 10 of them, 10 regions were represented there. 
how can you say it's legal? We had um, representatives of the regions present. The meeting that they had that they are referring to, that they went to interdict us, one critical integral component of any uh, uh, central committee meeting are the leadership. If you have a central committee meeting, you have not been able to put your leadership together. You wait. At that meeting, she not being even the chair. That is an illegal. We are saying that one is illegal because she's not the chairman. She's not the chairman of the party. Of the party. So she can't even if we were there at that meeting, we could have she had been sat, she has sat in maybe like an ordinary member or something, and we would have given her backup. She was there alone. Okay, but the challenge is that to the extent that she was sworn in, she wasn't made, it wasn't made clear that, look, this is an interim She knew thing. about it. She we are going to have to my, do my this dear, again. See, a constitution is a constitution, and she also knew that she didn't get the required this thing. The, the required the, votes. The votes yeah. to make uh, her... The 50 yes, plus one. It is just, it, it is just normal that, or oh, I don't the word is not coming, that if you yourself know that where I'm sitting, it is not for me, and at any particular point in time, there can be an eruption. You just um, say that, okay, if I... I, I so, so is it your, your view that, or maybe this is unfair on you, so the point is there is an election to be done. Yes. If Madam Kumankuma deems it that she is popular enough, she should demonstrate it by contesting am, uh, and getting the 50 we will plus be, one. We will be so happy. But with all this rancor, what's the guarantee that if she even wins, you all can work together? Oh, after, after working together, these things happen that we, we can, I mean, we come together. and Because once this thing is out of the way, what rancor? We won't have court case. She won't go and say that uh, we, are, we, are, we are in contempt. So you should be put in prison. I mean, these things will be talked about. Because if she's becoming the chairman herself, being there as the chairman, then we will let her know that, madam, you can't do this. Because as a woman and as a mother, you don't sit down and say that the people who are with you should be taken to prison. You don't take them to police station because they've spoken about you. Then Nanadu would have taken the whole of Ghana to police station because every morning we are on him. We were on uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. We were on His Excellency Rollins the late. We were on His Excellency uh, Atamil the late. People used to call him a poodle. Nobody took anybody to police station. But if somebody talks about the fact that you didn't get the required vote, so let's give way for us to do a rerun. The next moment at the Braca police station is calling them. Okay. So in sum total, when do you hope to have this rerun? What we July ending. You want to do it in July? Yes. But yet there is a date of October before December, that is, that, is that is the one in relation to the yes, consent yes. That's the one she wants. That is what she wants, but it cannot be. I mean, how can you be so unfair? You are okay. with people. The, their term is not yet over. Then because this is going on, that you have to go for a rerun, then everybody should lose their position. My dear, today we are in, already in May. You are doing an election. We have filing fees. We have to go around. We have to organize the party. We have to make sure that people, we get the right people to stand at pieces. You say we are going to do all these elections by November. Why? Besides, she wants to be a flag bearer. And I believe that if that is her dream, then she should just go and be a flag bearer, start campaigning for a flag bearership position. But if she wants to be a chairman, the condition is that by the constitutional provision, she should rerun. If she is popular, as we are all saying, you have 43 standing for you. You need only 8%. So you are working for 8% of the vote. Okay. It shouldn't be a problem. All right. Now, E-Levy is going to be implemented in, what, seven days. What are your thoughts on... Uh, Jifa, you've given me some poison to drink this morning. You are not happy about uh, the E-Levy? You think, how can I be happy? But there are exemptions in the E-Levy. Like what? Oh, Nadaya. <laughs> what exemptions, my dear? What E-Levy... 100 Ghana cities, you won't pay anything. How many people send 100 Ghana cities to do transact business? So what's the CPP's view? It has always been, it is a punitive tax. It is a tax that is, it, it, it is just meant to rob people. The e levy is like, I've put money in my wallet and you dip your hand into it and you say, I'm taking 1.5. Or but 1 .7 the, they are not dipping into it. When you effect an electronic transfer, you are paying for if that, that is, activity. That is dipping. It is in my pocket and I'm using it to pay something and you take. 
that money that is there that money that is there on my wallet as momo i don't know if i said it correctly yes, i don't know correct. how to say it's it. correct as momo let me repeat as momo that money is money that i have paid the tax on it's money that i have paid the tax on so you are opposed to the eleven, yes. but it's going to happen nonetheless so all i do is that i won't do momo you revert to cash i revert to cash because the point is that even if i use my atm card to pay at the pos you pay i'll pay yes so if somebody pays cash at the shop and i pay with atm then it means that i am paying more than the person so why don't you i revert to cash aren't you concerned about losing convenience the inconvenience of losing money is higher than using cash. That inconvenience of losing my money is higher. Me, I'm a politician. I calculate everything that I, I spend. Okay, so you're against e-levy. Neutrality allowance. Uh, some categories of uh, public sector workers, mainly belonging to Ploxag, are on strike because government had promised to pay a 20% neutrality allowance. It's not happened. We didn't know about it. We only got yes. to know four months after the fact. Agree or disagree? This is the civil service built by Nkuma. <laughs> no, but you see, I was a civil, a public servant. You were a public servant. Yeah. You were working at the PURC. The PURC, GIPC, free mm -hmm. zones. I worked most of my life, mm -hmm. even though my desire was to be in politics. And in public service, more political than even the politics we are doing. This one is a free politics. Mm -hmm. That one is politics, somebody sitting on. I mean, whatever allowances that government promised. Yesterday, I heard them talking on on radio and they were talking about allowing them to um if somebody wants to run and all that and if you are running you are not going to go into politics the bottom line is that if government make promises they should adhere to it it has become very common that when government make promises as if they would just want to make it and keep you off but that's different from an allowance to, quote-unquote, buy people's neutrality. The question is, it comes with the job. I am saying that they haven't done it. Did they budget for it? Four months after the fact, it has not been given. Was it just a saying or it, it was, has been budgeted for? I haven't seen that allowance in the budget. I don't know, maybe it's hidden somewhere. I haven't seen a figure put to that. So it means that truly, if it is not in the budget, I don't know if there will be a supplementary budget. They will put it in there because it's a lot of money to pay at different categories. Because if you say 20%, it depends 20% of maybe your net or your gross. It depends on everybody's salary at every level. So how much are you going to give or put aside for that allowance? The bottom line here is not the issue of... I mean, compensating for somebody for being neutral. But the issue of you have promised to give me this amount and you have not given it to me. And why is it so? And it's always like that. Okay, but the question I'm asking is, should we even be paying for people to be neutral? It's no. Different, it's different if oh, that is government that wants that to is another give a salary bump. If government wants to give a salary bump, that's fine. But should we pay public servants to be neutral? No. I mean... It does. I didn't catch it very well. I mean, I'm like, ah. That's what it is. That you they are, don't. They are not no, allowed. They, they are not allowed, allowed to attend political, political parties. Party. They, they can't are not hold the party card. Yeah, they can't that. engage yeah, in that, that party argument. Yes. Space and all that. So we should pay them for losing that. No, but that one is. So I, I was. I mean, I was confused when I heard it. That it's different if you want to give a salary bump. I mean, these are allowances. Different kinds of allowances are there in the public service. So when I heard that they have to pay people to encourage them not to do politics, I was like, I mean, what, what's going on? If somebody wants to do politics, they resign and they go and do their politics. Do you get me? This public service is not, it's not supposed to be partisan. So if you resign, you go and do your politics. Even some of them, when they don't make it, they come back. Maybe not into the same position because the position wasn't waiting for them. Some of them, they take their leave and they go and do it, especially with the universities. Mm -hmm. You find most of the ministers who lost their positions, MPs teaching, teaching at Gimpa, um, UD, everywhere, all over the country. 
So they should follow the procedure. If you want to I do don't, take your leave, if depending on your organization, you take your leave, go. Sweetheart, but in public know, sector, what has really have happened to, that this thing came up? We need to get to the genesis of it. Uh, that clause has been taken out. Not yet. So why are they going to give them allowance? Sometimes some of these allowances are carved just to shore up the salaries of um, workers, public sector workers. But that particular one, uh, it didn't really... And you know, when government make these promises, it's very difficult for them to adhere to it. Okay. All right, we have to end, but I'll invite you another time. Okay, thank so you. I hope you join us again so, yes, on the I key would, points. Would, Great. Would. Thanks for coming in, Nanaya Jantua. Nanaya Achimpem Jantua. Nanaya the third. That's what I'll be calling her behind closed doors. Okay. But thanks to all of you for watching us this morning. Many thanks to all of you for your messages. Sorry, I couldn't read the rest, but I'll be watching them. I'll be tagging them. Thank you very much to the entire production team. Join us next week for another edition of the key points.